First of all, welcome to Homestead Miami Speedway for Ford Championship Weekend. We're going to crown three National Ch Series champions and uh, the NAS NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and finish up Sunday with the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. So joining us now is uh, a young man who has had a terrific season. Uh, he is on the verge of claiming his first NASCAR National Series Championship in the Xfinity Series, and that's Chris Busher. And uh, Chris, congratulations on the season you've had to date. There's still some work to be done. And uh, just talk about your thoughts as you come to Homestead, Miami, uh, and, you, and what you want to try to accomplish over the next couple of days. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a, been a really good season for us. Been really proud of proud of the work that the guys have put in to get to this point. Uh, you know, it's what we were, were planning on doing at the beginning of the season. We were hoping to, to be in this position, but uh, like I said, we're, uh, it's not over. We got, uh, we got Homestead left here. It's, uh, it was a really good track for us last year. We ended up finishing, uh, I believe it was fifth here. Um, one, of my, one of my favorite mile and a half tracks. Uh, I like short tracks are, are mostly my favorite, but this is probably my favorite of the bigger tracks. Asphalt's worn out. You can move around a lot. It makes for, makes for a good race, in my opinion. I, uh, I, I have a lot of fun racing here. I think a lot of people do, so it makes, uh, makes it a good, good finale for us. Uh, our, our guys have been been working really hard to make sure we got something to uh, to come out here and and get another top five with this weekend. Um, you know, I'm looking looking forward to to getting going here. I've had a had a blast this year. It's been a lot of fun. We've got a couple wins and been in position to get a handful more. And you know, we're just uh, got to got to close it out at this point. We'll take questions for Chris Busher. If you have one, raise your hand. We have two mic runners, Kelly and Andrew. We'll start right there with my man Kyle. Kyle back to Race Chancellor Online. Uh, Chris, I know I asked you this in Charlotte back in May. I won't ask it again. I mean, did you, did you ever think you'd get to this point, uh, this this point of the season, uh, coming as the points leader in here in the Homestead? Uh, after the end of last year, uh, I knew we were capable of getting to this point. We had a, a great, great run at the last ten races. Um, it was really good momentum, and I knew that if we could could build on that coming into this year, that we would definitely be in contention for this and. Uh, we we did just that. We fired off really well this year. We've had uh, you know great consistency throughout the year. Like I said, been in contention to win a lot of races, and uh, you know it's exactly what what I knew that we were capable of doing, and just had to execute. And we've we've done that. So yes, I expected to to be somewhere near this situation, um, and and the guys have done a, a great job to make sure we haven't had any any mechanical failure or anything on the way, and we, we've stayed out of trouble up to uh, up to this point. So knock on wood. We're, we're doing all right at the moment. I got a follow-up for you. I know NASCAR has been, been discussing about the uh, possible chase uh, format in the Xfinity Series. What are your thoughts on that? You think it would either help or hurt the series? I mean, what, what's your view on that? So I don't know how far along that is, but I have, uh, I have mixed thoughts on it. Uh, from one side, I, I look at what it has done for the Cup Series and the, the excitement, the drama, the – the coverage that it has brought to that series at the end of the year, you know, the last 10 races, everybody talks about Daytona, the season opener. That's, that's the big one. That's when everybody gets the, the most coverage. We, we really, really announce ourselves being, being at the beginning of our series, uh, our season. And when you look at these last 10 races and what the chase has done for it, I think it has made it something that people will tune in to watch and really pay attention to. So from that aspect, I think it would be really, really good for our series. I know there's a lot of different rules in there that, uh, you know, say uh, what it would do with, with guys coming down from the Cup Series, uh, how the elimination rounds would work, if it would be the same or, or a little different. <coughs> um, you know, and, and on the other side of it, this is the series, the point standings that we have now is, is how we grew up. Uh, it's how all the, all the guys in the garage grew up, even on the Cup side. I mean, this is, this is what they're used to. You, you raced every weekend and did as much as you could do every weekend to make sure that when you got to the end of the year, you were where you needed to be. And I think from that side of it, it makes, um, makes a full season more important. It makes putting together the whole package a little bit more important. Um, but I understand that the, uh, the chase was done to, to capitalize on wins and, and really make sure that everybody was racing as competitive as possible towards the end. Let's go right next door to the gentleman right there from Albuquerque. 
Let's uh, hear from him, and then we'll go over to Mark Garrow, and then Chris Knight. Hi, this is Joel Arquente, ESPN Albuquerque. You ran some races for Front Row Motorsports this year in the Cup Series. Do you have any plans to run for Front Row next year in the Cup Series? So we don't have anything planned for next year. Uh, I did get to run, I think it was six races what it ended up being, and I had a blast doing it. Uh, it was an awesome bunch of guys over there. I had a lot of fun. I uh, learned a lot as well and realized real quickly how how busy double duty could, could get for a weekend and running back and forth between the garages. So uh, gave me uh, made me give a lot more respect to the guys that do it every weekend and, and you know are constantly running because when you get out of the car, I remember Fontana was the first one, and you get out of the car and there was five minutes between an Xfinity practice and a cup practice, and the garages seemed like they were a mile away there. <laughs> it was a it was a busy weekend. I was uh, I was wore out by the end of it, but you know there's uh, there's no plans to do it next year. Uh, what it what I got out of it this year was was invaluable though. Thanks. Let's go over to Mark Garrow. Raise your hand there, Mark, and then we'll go to Chris, and then we'll go to my man from Easton. Mark Garrow, PRN. Chris, uh, two questions. Number one, are you thinking with a lead of 18 points, more defense or more offense? And I'm also curious how you're handling, you know, the pressure cooker that this is for the first time. If I told you there was no pressure, I'd be lying to you. Um, you know, we're, we're handling it as best as we know how. Uh, I think uh, I'm a pretty, pretty laid back person, pretty calm, and, and I can... I can handle that part of it. Uh, Scott's the same way. I mean, he's uh, he's very calm. We've been able to to get places because of that during during weekends where uh, you know something doesn't go exactly right. There's no there's no blow up. There's no uh, there's nothing that's gonna gonna turn a, a bad weekend into a catastrophic one. So that that's been a huge part of, of our success this year. So I feel like the pressure we can handle at this point. I mean, we we want to be here. I mean, it's not uh, it's not by accident. And it's not. Not something that um, you know we just backed into. We, we've earned the right to be here. And uh, going on to your next question, in a way, we, we've earned the right to be a little bit more defensive this weekend. Uh, we've worked hard enough this season, and we've done uh, better than anybody else to get to this point. So we can go out here and we can race to make sure that that we don't put ourselves in a bad position. That being said, we're not coming here to finish 13th. I think is the lockup spot. We're not we're not coming here to just aim for that. We're coming here to, to run like we did last year and get a top five out of this thing. And if we can do that, you know, obviously the points will fall wherever they will and we'll be just fine. So it's still a race weekend. We're still coming out here to, to get our fast and all forward up to the front and, and have a good good day. I feel like this was a race last year that was uh, probably probably one of our better three or four races of the year. And if we can we can be anything like that this year, we'll be in really good shape and might actually get to get another win out of this season. Go to Chris Knight, go to my man from Easton, and then to Lewis. Chris Knight, catchtrends.com. Uh, Chris, during your teleconference this week, it sound, sound like you were a little less optimistic about sponsorship for 2016. Just wondering if you could uh, elaborate on that. Uh, I don't think I'm optimistic about it. I feel like we will have something come to. I just don't have anything right now. Uh, we don't have everything planned out at the moment, so it will be – It'll be a couple of weeks, I'm sure, before we get everything lined up and, and get a little bit closer. Um, you know, not not that I'm, I'm worried about it. I just, uh, you know, we got a, a job to do at hand right now, and we're gonna we're gonna take care of that first, and then then we'll be able to see what we can get for next year. But you know, I I feel pretty confident that, that the guys back at the shop are, are doing everything they can to to get sponsors on board and to try and put together a, a 2016 season, wherever that may be. Right over there to your left shoulder there, my man from Easton. And we got Lewis. And then we'll come back over here. Did you have a question from uh, upstate New York? Okay. We'll go to Dwight. Go ahead. Back to Antivetti, fun stretch. Um, Roush Fenway is a really big team, a lot of big connections. Uh, have you reached out to guys like Ricky Stenhouse or Carl Edwards who have won championships with Roush? Have you reached out to them for any advice when it comes to racing in such pressure-packed situations? I uh, have talked to Ricky quite a bit uh, just talking about this weekend and uh, obviously he's been in this uh, situation twice in this series and he's come out on top twice. Um, I guess he's been um, probably been in contention more than that but uh, you know he said that that he was behind one year and he was ahead one year and uh, he gave me the different scenarios and how they were able to to accomplish the seasons um, and how they were able to pull it off. I know that Scott has talked to, to Mike Kelly as well. <laughs> 
uh, talked to Mike a little bit, um, you know, just trying to figure out what they did to, to make it all work. And uh, Mike's actually the one that said, you know, y'all y'all have earned the right to to do what you need to do this weekend. You don't have to go win the race. You, you've you've earned the, the right to be where you are, and, and you know, y'all have worked hard to get to that point, so y'all can go out and do whatever you need to do to wrap up that championship and think big picture. So got a, got a lot of advice from them, um, <coughs> and, and I think that's going to help a lot this weekend. Let's go to Lewis, and then uh, back over here to Dwight. Lewis is right to your left there. Go ahead. Lewis Frank Reuters. You kind of touched upon this. Uh, to quote uh, Yogi Berra, ain't over till it's over. What do you do when you're not on the track to keep mentally balanced? Your team, your crew chief, what do you, what do, you do? Your so games? We do, uh, <laughs> we do a, lot of, um, a lot of meetings during the week to try and figure out what we're going to do for the next one. Uh, you know, obviously our debrief meetings on Monday, and, and we'll come in and uh, you know, try and figure out what we did here last year, what we've done at different tracks this year that have worked well for us and what we can apply. Uh, you know, we've watched, uh, watched old race tape. We're just trying to try and do everything we can to focus on the weekend and, and make sure that we do as, as well as possible. And, you know, I think all that helps. And it's no different than what we do every weekend. I mean, it's not like we've changed what we've done now. Uh, well, now that we've gotten to the end, you know, this is what, what's gotten us to this point is working as hard as we have. So it, it's, it's going to be really important to make sure that we stay focused all weekend and, and, and pull this thing off, um, you know, beyond all the meetings of shop. I've uh, been, uh, been doing a little bit of yard work, just trying to, trying to, to relax a little bit and, and not worry too much about it. Um, you know, just, uh, just trying to get it all, go, get it all in line and, and wrap this thing up. And I'll, uh, the, the pressure and the stress and everything involved, I'll feel much better once this weekend is over. <laughs> Let's go to far right, Chris, over here to, to Dwight. Uh, Dwight Drum, RaceTate.com. Uh, uh, Chris, uh, as far as, uh, like on a teleconference the other day, you, there's so many young guys up there uh, that are chasing you. You're a young guy. Talk a little bit about your advice for young people about success, and do you think there's a youth movement in the Xfinity Series right now? Yeah, I think, I think it's a, a great bunch of, bunch of drivers in, in our series right now. There's a ton of competition. Um, during the teleconference, I thought it was funny. Somebody asked Chase what his advice would be for me, and he's like, uh, I got nothing for him. I mean, we're we're chasing him. We're not gonna gonna give it away. Uh, and that's the answer I expected. So I'm not not faulting for that at all. But uh, we have we have very good drivers in the series right now. It's been very competitive over the last several years, and um, it's a lot of a lot of guys that I've raced with since since Legends Car days. Uh, I've run with Ty since he was at Legends Cars. Uh, Arca with with Ty and Chase, and um, you know a lot of others through the field as well. So. You know, it's it's a bunch that have been around for a long time, and, and I remember being 12, 13 years old with the same bunch and, and just trying to get to this point. And a lot of us have been really fortunate and, and lucky and, and worked hard to get to this point. And, uh, you know, we're able to put on the same shows here as we were back then. So it's, uh, it's a nice sense of accomplishment to, to get as many as we have up to this point. And, you know, I think it's going to show years to come. You know, we're starting to see a, a handful of guys – getting out of the sport that have been in it a long time. I remember watching watching Jeff and, and, and Tony when, you know, I was wasn't even old enough to be at a racetrack. I was sitting at home on the couch watching uh watching on Sundays. So um, you know, it's it's cool to have the uh the depth in the field that we do to be able to to fill in those gaps as they come up. Kelly, did you have a question? Let's take Kelly Crandall. Kelly Crandall from popularspeed.com. Chris, I'm curious how you've changed your approach, approach to racing this year because last year after you missed Daytona and had some bad luck after that, you admitted that since you weren't points racing, you guys just focused on winning and you were running races differently because of that. So this year, competing for the championship right off the bat, how have you changed the way you race this year? We did not change anything until probably about 10 to go. Uh, you know, we raced the, all of the, the first two-thirds of the season trying to get all we could get every weekend. And when we realized that it had worked to the point where we've got ourselves in a very good position coming down to the last handful. Uh, you know, we, we've had to change a little bit. We, we haven't taken the unnecessary chances. Um, you know, I think you go back to, uh, to Bristol, um, running, having a little hiccup in, in the fuel just before uh, on a green-white checker. I mean, you know, that was, that was a risk at the time, and, and it almost paid off really well but it did not and luckily we were able to, to finish it off and, and come home with a, a tent and, and that was kind of um, uh, you know a, 
an eye opener for us. We realized that we had to be a little bit careful as we came down in this final stretch to uh, to make sure that we were going to be there at the end. So from that regard, we're trying not to try not to be four wide on some of these restarts. I know that's been um, been some of the craziest times during any of our races in the in the last couple of years. And you know, trying to make sure that we're not speeding on pit road. I uh, I got caught at Kansas, I believe, and you know realized how far back that set us. And so I've tried to make sure that I'm a little bit on the conservative side. And you know, 50 RPM, the the length of the pit road isn't going to be much. Uh, you're not going to going to lose big time there. So it's an easy way to be conservative without just backing way off. Uh, just small things like that that are going to help us as we come down to the end. Anybody else have a question for Chris Busher? Chris, thank you so much for coming in and visiting with us. Uh, we wish you all the best this weekend. And uh, again, uh, great season so far. Keep it up. I appreciate it. Thank Hopefully, you. Hopefully uh, get to come talk to you after this race. <laughs> okay. Always a good sign. Thank you, Chris.